Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another edition of With the Prophet. I'm Ali Coleman, our beer host, and we are here with our guest from Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Azam Al Hakim. Assalamu alaikum and welcome. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and jazakumullah khair for having me. Yeah, our pleasure to have you with us as we continue our discussion at, uh, on various ways that we and our relationship with, with the people around us should be with the Prophet. This is the whole idea of the show, looking at the Sunnah looking for ways to be with the Prophet in our lives. We have previously talked about various uh, uh, relationships that the Prophet, peace be upon him, had with people in his family, his wives, his kids, grandkids. Today we're going to be focusing on kids in general, those people who did not have blood kinship to him, but were nevertheless around him, the kids of the companions uh, and others. And what were the interactions that the Prophet had with these, ch these children? Without a doubt, the Prophet of Islam, peace be upon him, is the ultimate role model and should be the ultimate role model for Muslims for all time. Uh, the times that we live in, it's typically sports figures and various kinds of entertainers, unfortunately, even among Muslims. But we should, we should know that we have the supreme uh, example uh, and we can use this uh, for a, a role model for ourselves as well as for our children. Let's start from the foundation, from the ground up, a very basic and simple question. Why is it important for any society, any nation, to get it right when it comes to raising our kids? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala abdihi wa rasulihi al-ameen, nabiyyina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. We all know that a community, a nation, a country is built on a foundation. And this foundation is the population, mm -hmm. the people themselves. Mm -hmm. So you can't have a nation without people. And the quality of the people is what makes it or breaks it. Mm -hmm. So if you have a bunch of lazy folks, uneducated, not willing to work, you're going to have a lousy nation. Mm. But if you have a nation that is populated with enthusiastic people, yeah. well-educated, wanting to make a change and a difference, mm -hmm. then you will have victory and glory. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ highlighted the importance of the children in our society to the extent that he himself sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he is not from among us who does not respect the elders and have mercy over the youngsters so now the prophet wasallam, is making us in the middle mm -hmm. <clears throat> there is always someone who's older than you you have to respect him yeah and there's always someone who's younger than you. You have to have mercy for, upon them because this type of dealing with the children will make them grow up to be merciful to other children. If you abuse them, mm -hmm. if you misbehave or mistreat them, mm -hmm. the, all, all what they will have uh, when they recollect their youthhood and when they were young was to abuse mm -hmm. other children. Yeah. as well. I, I, you know, there are so many uh, things that are contrary to the way we live that the Prophet himself, peace be upon him, did. For example, we know that he was respectful towards children. We, in our times, we have a double standard when it comes to giving greetings, peaceful greetings to, to people. We are careful to acknowledge the presence of adults, but we readily, unfortunately, ignore children. Is that true? And why is that? And what was the Prophet's approach to greeting and giving salam to children? Well, this is unfortunately true to an extent. Okay. Now the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, as we have studied before and said it so many times, he is the role model mm. that Allah instructed us in the Quran to follow. So the, Allah tells us in the Quran that you have a great role model to follow, and that is the Prophet ﷺ, if you want the benefits in this life and the hereafter. Now, he was a fully accomplished 
person. Mm -hmm. He was the perfect human being. In a sense that he was the leader, he was the ruler, he was the imam, he was the teacher, he was the companion, he was everything you could dream of. And when you look at him, when it comes to children, mm -hmm. you would find that he allocated a lot of love and respect to the children. Yeah. And as Ibn Malik says, may Allah be pleased with him, I was once playing with the boys and the Prophet ﷺ passed by us. So children playing and they're having fun and the Prophet is walking by ﷺ. If he were to walk, he would not have been noticed and no one would be angry with him mm -hmm. for not giving salam or for not greeting us. But not the Prophet ﷺ. And it says that whenever the Prophet walked by, he would pose stop and give each one of us salam. Hmm. Now, what impact does this action have on children mm -hmm. who are playing around? They would have a lot of respect because when you give respect, you get respect. Yeah, that's right. So the Prophet ﷺ is not ignoring them. He is mm -hmm. going out of his way to greet them and to show them that you guys, though you're young and you're children, you have a position in mm -hmm. Islam mm -hmm. and in life. Mm -hmm. You have your own status and weight. So don't think of yourself lightly. Yeah. So this is the message that the Prophet was giving to the children, والسلام, but better more, the message is for us who are old and mature, how to treat the children from now on. Mm. So do not neglect them, mm. even if they're not your own. Do not ignore them, show them the amount of respect. Maybe, yes, maybe you will pass by them, you give them salam, and maybe you will not get a proper reply. No problem, mm. you're mm. investing. Yeah, and, the and they'll remember it, even if they do the wrong thing in that time. They'll file it into their memories and it may come to impact their lives positively in the future. Sure. I'd like to ask, uh, you're, you were talking about the kids uh, playing. Um, some parents don't see that it's their job to have close relationship with their kids and to play with them. They have this concept that it has to be a, like an, uh, a corporate organization or a military organization. I'm the general and you're the, the, the subordinates and it's a very dictatorial. Others fault, as we discussed previously about grand grandchildren, fault on the side of being too lenient, that I wouldn't be a loving parent if I don't give them what they want. And so the del del delicate balance to be made, to be struck between these two extremes. Uh, what was the approach uh, of the prophet in this regard? And uh, just generally, if you'd like to talk about catering to the, the desires and needs of the children, having order, developing a relationship with them. The, th the professional therapists these days, they give us a formula. They say, if you give your kids a bunch of rules, you don't develop a relationship with them, you're gonna develop a, a rebel. Rules, no relationship equals a, a rebel, all right? And so uh, what we're talking about here is having the relationship and uh, the example of the Prophet in this regard. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala Muhammad. The Prophet والسلام, invested a lot, but again, this was not something that he was making up or something that he was faking it. On the contrary, this was his nature. So when you blend both together, you get, you get the perfect human being. The Prophet والسلام, had objectives. His objectives were to upbring the children who will be tomorrow's men in a way that would give them confidence. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, not to allow them to cross the red lines. So in so many hadiths, Mahmoud ibn Rabi'ah, for example, of a five-year toddler, five-year kid, he says, I remember only from the Prophet ﷺ, because he's a child, that once he was performing wudu, and I was 
within his vicinity, he filled his mouth with, with water and spit it right into my face. You know what, when you play with children yeah. and you just put right. some water into their face? And he said, he laughed and I laughed. The Prophet ﷺ played mm. with this youngster. Mm -hmm. So there was this interaction mm. showing him that, listen, you, we, we, we're not that far apart. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an mm -hmm. old man yeah. and you're a youngster, but I have a lot of love and compassion for you. He used to play with them a lot. He used to greet them. Whenever he used to see them, he used to tell them, I love you. Yani in one hadith, it stated that whenever the Prophet ﷺ saw the families, the women and the children coming, he would stop and say, by Allah, I love you, the people of Medina. By Allah, I love you, you people of Medina. By Allah, I love you, you people of the Medi Medina. Mm -hmm. Expressing it publicly, mm -hmm. showing to them his affection, means that this child would grow up with a lot to give because he was on the receiving end. Now, if you treat your child like in a corporate organization mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. like a subordinate, he will grow up to deal with others and maybe with his own par parents mm. who grow up old, <clears throat> he would deal with them in the same fashion. Yeah. But this does not mean that it's a carte blanche. Do whatever you do because you're a child. There are limits. Yeah. And the Prophet ﷺ used to show the children how to be responsible. So whenever a child did something wrong, the Prophet would correct it, alayhi salatu mm. Nowadays, we don't have this. His son-in-law, Umar, that is his stepson, the son of Umm Salama, Umar ibn Abi Salama or Amr ibn Abi Salama narrates that he was eating when he was a child with the Prophet ﷺ. And like all children, they jump around and eat from the whole plate or dish because they ate from the same plate mm -hmm, mm -hmm. altogether. So the Prophet ﷺ advised him in a very beautiful fashion. He said, Ya Ghulam, O son, O young boy, Say, Bismillah. So the first thing, don't jump to the food. You have to learn that before you eat something, you say, Bismillah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Eat with your right hand, meaning that eating with your left hand is totally prohibited in Islam. And eat from whatever is in front of you and don't invade other people's privacy and their mm. own space by eating from in front of it. So when you look at this, you find that the Prophet ﷺ is striking the right balance. Give unconditional love, give your affection publicly, show the people what you have for them, the children that is, but at the same time, if they make a mistake, you have to correct them, you have to teach them, mm -hmm. you have to tell them mm -hmm. in a proper way. Great. We are ready for our break, Sheikh. We'll come back to continue uh, our discussion, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to With the Prophet. We are discussing uh, the relationship that the Prophet of Islam sallallahu alaihi wasallam had with children around him who were not his uh, uh, blood uh, kins kinsfolk. Uh, I'd like to ask you, uh, Sheikh Sheikh Azam, about um, a very important uh, growth and development topic when it comes to children. You know, there are a number of very important social skills that they have to learn uh, how to cooperate how to work as a part of a team. And uh, the subject of competition is what I'm trying to get to. There's a right and a wrong way to compete for kids to learn how to compete. And a spirit of sportsmanship has to be de developed. Kids have to learn how to not win and to celebrate the success of their fellow competitors. That's something that takes practice. And so my question here is about uh, the, what we can take, examples we can, we can take in this regard celebrating the success of those competing against you for the purpose of discovering and developing talents. There are all kinds of competitions nowadays, athletic, academic, Quran competitions, so on and so forth. What, uh, what about the Prophet on this subject? Well, the Prophet, alayhi salatu used to 
encourage such competitions. In the hadith, he used to gather his cousins, Abdullah, Ubaidullah, the sons of his uncle, Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, and others. Mm -hmm. And he would set a line for them to line up at, and then he goes far away from them, and he gives them incentives. Mm -hmm. Whoever races and wins, I will give him so-and-so. Mm. And the hadith tells us that they raced towards the Prophet ﷺ, and once they reached him, he embraced them and he kissed them, which shows that the Prophet ﷺ also kisses youngsters and, 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 and boys that of that age, and there's nothing wrong in that. Unlike nowadays, anything you do would be considered to be uh, uh, molestation and, 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 mm -hmm. and, and the likes, mm -hmm. which is way out of proportion. Kids have to have affection. They have to have these feelings. Mm -hmm. And the Prophet ﷺ also used to conduct races on horseback. Okay. He used to endorse wrestling mm. between the companions so that this would strengthen them prepare them for a war when needed, and to make them feel the beauty of winning and taste mm -hmm. the bitterness of losing so that they would compete better and evolve uh, uh, more. Mm, good. I, you just mentioned, um, uh, again, physical affection. There are numerous studies that we can point to now, modern in modern times, psychosocial st studies, uh, demonstrating even in medical science that there are benefits in the health of the patient when the healer has uses physical touch and in the classroom same thing we have valid studies evidence showing that when teachers employ this they're caressing or stro stroking using physical affection along with the education the performance goes up in the students uh, I think uh, the Prophet ﷺ understood this he was not shy to love and to be affectionate physically towards not only his, his children and grandchildren, of course, but also uh, to those around him who were not his uh, family persons. Correct, the Prophet ﷺ would do this, but we have to be careful. The time of the Prophet ﷺ with pure heart and sincere uh, uh, Islam is different than our times. Mm -hmm. So one may cross the line if he allows a teacher to have such physical contact with children unless he's married and he's well behaved and he's well known we cannot expand this and open it without any limitation and at the same time we cannot restrict it to be no touch relationship mm -hmm. there are hadiths where the Prophet ﷺ kissed young companions. Mm -hmm. There are hadiths where the Prophet ﷺ joked with youngsters and children, where he stroked their heads and recommended doing this as in the case of orphans. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of evidences that support such medical researches and uh, uh, psychiatric uh, um, papers, but again, we take Islam to control and govern everything else, not the other way around. So we don't need these scientific theories and, and reports to back the way we practice our religion because maybe in 10 years time, there will be another paper condemning it or saying something against it. So we will not have our Islam, our religion, uh, um, a place where it can be scrutinized by a paper given by a psychiatrist or by a scientist. What about Omar ibn al-Khattab? Uh, how did the children view him? See, when we said that the Prophet ﷺ, whenever he passed by the children playing, he would stop and give salam to them and embrace them and they loved it 
because this was the figure of the Prophet Allah described him in the Quran that he was merely sent as a mercy to the jinn and to the humans, to the whole worlds. So he is a mercy This is him. You cannot help but sense this mercy, even if you're a child. Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, he's the second seeded person in Islam. So Abu Bakr is the first one to enter paradise. Umar ibn al-Khattab is the second man in Islam, in terms of importance, in terms of closeness to the Prophet. High figure in Islam. Mm. That's why he's buried next to the Prophet alongside with Abu mm. Bakr. Only Abu Bakr and Umar are buried with the Prophet Having said that, he was well known to be strong in religion. A man of a very strong will, serious, dead serious, would never tolerate injustice, would never overlook any form of transgression or oppression. So it was well known. You make a mistake, you're going to pay for it. So, so he had a reputation and he was known for being, a, is it fair to say stern? I wouldn't go that far because mm. you have to remember, he's the second seed. He is kind, loving, caring. The mm. Prophet loved him mm -hmm. the most after Abu Bakr. Such a person can't be described as, as such. But you can say that he was perceived as being strict, okay. serious. And so the kids were, were... And this is why in one incident, mm -hmm. it was reported that he passed by a group of children playing. Mm -hmm. Now, once they saw him, they did not react in the same way that they reacted when they saw the Prophet mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. that time. So they all ran away from his way, except one boy who was like in his 11 years of age, 10 years of age. Mm -hmm. And this boy was Abdullah ibn Zubair ibn al-Awwam. Mm. His mother was Asma bint Abi Bakr. So his aunt was Aisha, the mother of the believers. His father was a Zubair ibn al-Awwam, the cousin of the Prophet ﷺ, whose mother was Safiya, the aunt of the Prophet ﷺ, and one of the ten heaven-bound companions. So he was a man in a sense that he was 10 years of age, but he was a man. He did not run away. So out of curiosity, Umar asked him, why didn't you run away with your companions, with your friends? He said, why should I run away? I didn't do anything wrong to be afraid of you. And the road is not narrow so that I can leave space for you. It's so big and wide. So Umar was astonished and he was happy with such uh, a response. The, the thing is, or the punchline, is look how the children treated the Prophet ﷺ and how they treated Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. Not that Umar was wrong, but the nature of the Prophet ﷺ, the holistic mercy, kindness, and love that he had was overwhelming, while what was overwhelming with Umar, though he had these same emotions and, 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 and feelings, but what he was perceived as to be a tough, strict ruler. Mm -hmm. You know, the subject of uh, orphans, as we run out of time in this episode, uh, it's a big subject. Of course, we don't have time to fully e explore it. But uh, there are many causes for it. Terminal illness, war, forbidden relationships, divorce, all these things create orphans. They will always be with us. They always have been. And we as Muslims, of course, have an obligation to care for their needs. Sometimes they may lose the father both parents, maybe the extended family is absent or feckless for some reason. What's your advice about dealing with orphans? There is a hadith or a number of hadiths where the Prophet tells us والسلام, on the day of judgment, the orphan uh, uh, provider or the person who sponsors an orphan and I are like this on the day of judgment in paradise, meaning that, that we're so close to one another because of what he had done. For doing what? For sponsoring and taking care of an orphan. 
The definition of orphan in mm. Islam yeah. is a person whose father has died before the age of puberty. Mm -hmm. So once the orphan reaches the age of puberty, he's not an orphan anymore. Can be. Mm -hmm. If his mother died and his father is still alive, he's not an orphan. Mm -hmm. So the main provider for him is his father, mm -hmm. who if he did not have him, he would be called an Is orphan. that for male? Both. Girls and boys, mm -hmm. if they lost their father, mm -hmm. they're considered to be orphans okay. in Islam. Islam highlights the importance of taking them in, not just giving them money while they're at the orphanage. This is not sponsoring them. Sponsoring them is to take them in with your family, living in your house, eating from your food, upbringing them in the Islamic fashion as directed by the Prophet He also told us, if you stroke an orphan's head, then this would cause your heart to soften and for your things that you desire to take place. The Prophet saw one of his companions and he told him, do you want Allah to answer your dua and give you what you want and for your heart to be softened? And the man said, yes. The Prophet told him, stroke the head of an orphan, not to strike him or to beat him, but mm -hmm. rather to show your affection to him mm. when you just cuddle him and, mm. and, and you wipe over his head and hair, mm. Allah would grant you a lot of reward for that. So Islam cares for such segment of the society. Islam tells you it's part of your good Islam to take care of these orphans and not to let them be uh, uh, on the streets maybe become bad elements of mm, the society. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, very serious and touchy subject. Uh, we appreciate you addressing that and all the others for today's episode. Thank you so much uh, for being with us, uh, Sheikh uh, Awesome. Jazakumullah khair. We hope to continue with uh, an additional uh, episode dealing with the subject of children around the Prophet who are not his family members, but we are concluding for today. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.